Hi guys, it's me Karen and I've come to do a page in Ink House by Rory Dobner. And I started this page. And I did the owl basically the same way I did the owl on my last page that I did. I have to find it really quick here. So he's done with the uh, same Distress Ink colors as this one. I just darkened him up with a tiny bit more of Walnut Stain ink around the darkest areas. The reason I did that part of him like that was because I started the walls in kind of a brown tone and then I was going to do these wood pieces and I thought it was all just going to be this big brown page. So I thought I'd add a little blue in here to the um, wall pieces. And when my daughter saw it, she said, you have to show people how you did that if you show the page. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you. It's all done in Distress Ink. And all I did was take some of the um, post-it tape. I have a bunch of them sitting down here on my desk. And I will block off, um, trying to find an easy one to block. We'll do this one here. So we just take it and put the tape down on different areas so that they don't get the inking done on it and I can get a better ink down on the page. So I just go around and tape off the wood pieces and some of these wood pieces are curved so you just have to kind of take your time laying down your tape you don't get it. It's not going to be perfect. This post-it tape, if you used it a few times, it's not going to stick terribly well, but for my purposes, it's going to do okay. I could use a little one here because this one's, can, it can get some brown on it because it's going to be wood, but I don't want to get blue on it. So that's good enough. All right, so let's see if I can find both of my little tools here. Had them not too long ago. Well, I'll just switch pads. Okay, so we are doing it in gathered twigs, scattered straw, and in the blue jeans. So we're going to start off with the way I had originally done it, <laughs> which I decided um, was really just going to blur right into everything. So if you notice, this pad has got a little bit of brown here and a little bit of yellow on this side. So I gathered twigs first and I put it in like the corners and I was bringing it up. Thinking, oh, that would look nice. Try not to get it on everything. And then I brought in some of the yellow tones around the woods, up in the stars. And then I was thinking in my head, now that is just going to turn everything kind of muddy and brown and didn't like that idea. But because I had put it on this side, I'm going to have to do it on each one of them <laughs> because I like this effect. And so all I did was say, uh, I should have done it in brown, uh, blue or something so it would accent the... Um, Brown. So I just came in and added some of this navy into here. Added it in the shadows and kind of just smeared it around to where I wanted it. And that kind of gave this really nice look. And we'll peel off my tape here. 
and then we have that look. Now to actually give it another little bit of a dimension to it, I just took a little water and spritzed it on there and took off some of it to help kind of the splattered effect that we have going on with the um, tiny little stars that are going on all around here. And I just do a section at a time and then we'll color in the woodwork like I did on doo -doo -doo -doo. What is this page um, this page here I'll just color it in in the same color making it a blue and yellow background and of course the tree will be done in browns and then we'll try to do this in kind of metal colors planet colors whatever <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to show you how I did that uh, to start with, and then I'll come back and we will have all those little pieces finished, and then we'll go through and do all the wood pieces. See you in a bit. Hi guys, we're back, and you can tell the whole background is done now. And what I'm going to do is work on the... Um, I'm going to call it a telescope, but I probably have that wrong because we're in an observatory, so it probably has a bigger name on it. And just a reminder, we just did the background in the three dis distress ink colors, gathered twigs, scattered straw, and uh, faded jeans. So I did all the little teeny pieces in the background just by taping them off and coloring them in spritzing them with water so they get kind of more splattered look like the stars and whatever these little splatty guys are in the background. <laughs> Added a little extra of the um, gathered twigs up here for the wooded area because the wall pieces are falling apart. And we're going to do the telescope in kind of grays. So what I'm going to do is get the gray um, Distress ink out and show you how I'm going to do that. I'll get you down a little lower. Okay, I've got the um, black soot out as the gray. So in the darker areas, we're going to go pretty dark and then just lighten it up and kind of give it a gray look. I have a little blue blot there. It's <laughs> no big deal. So I'm using one of the detail sticks. You can tell the little foam piece is kind of cattywampus. They don't have very good glue on them, I don't think. But, I mean, it'll do what I would need it to do now that I've got my finger all black. Anyway, so I'm just going to kind of pounce it on here. When I'm pouncing it, I'm kind of pouncing it at an angle. I don't know if you can see that. So, I'm getting this side of that teeny tiny pad, most of the ink, the other part is touching, but I'm not, you know, just pound, 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 pounding on it. We're going to, well, I'm just going to go in and freehand this. Why not? Just around where it's dark, I'm going to put the most, we're doing a very, very, very light touch to this. So I'm just going to go around where the basic lines are, and then just kind of drag a little of that color up and over. I kind of want to leave a little bit of the lightest color in the center. Go up here and do that up here too. And just kind of drag it up. Down in between these, drag it up. Basically kind of going already where he's got the lines. And trying to give it kind of a round shape here. Okay, keep going down. down 
down to the bottom here. Okay, now we're going to kind of do the same on the other side, just in the opposite direction. So we're just going to take it right up here, kind of bring it over gently. Darken it underneath this piece of roofing. Put a little more pressure because there's not as much ink on it. Get it down here. Then while it doesn't have a much have very much ink on it, I like to kind of going over everything that may look a little uh not blended, I guess. Because <laughs> you can use that to blend it in. Tiny bits of ink that are left on this itty bitty pad. Okay, I'm going to go down this um, thing that's holding it up. Do the same exact thing. things falling apart. But we'll just hold on to it. Try to get this piece finished up. Darken up what's in here. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> That's going to be that. We're going to let that dry. It'll dry up a little lighter. There is a little bit of um, going on right there where the tool decided to fall apart. But we can add a little um, white in there. Not white ink, but white pencil or white Bosca and just kind of brush it and get it a little cleaner there. Now this is all kind of a base point. I will be darkening in here with a, a color too. Now I have to decide on the woodwork in here if I want to go dark or if I want to go say they painted it white or if they painted it black or something. But we're going to start on the tree. 
So we're going to get out a few um, browns, uh, kind of the same shades of the owl here. And we're going to do it with Distress Ink. We have the... This one's always hard to read. Walnut Stain. If you'll notice, this is the only one of Tim Holtz that they don't put a big name on. It's teeny and it's written down in a couple of languages, I assume. I mean, they all have a couple of languages, but this one is the hardest one for me to read. <laughs> it's probably because it's white out outlined. Okay, we'll get the distress. So the gathered twigs and vintage photo. So these are the the three that I'm going to use. Vintage photo, walnut stain, gathered twigs. Gathered twigs is the lightest color. This one has more of a red deep tone and this is almost a dark um, blackish color, like a walnut. Okay, so we're going to go in with all of those. Yes, on our trusty dandy little tool here. <laughs> Hopefully it won't fall apart on us. <laughs> okay, which one do I want? don't really want a green tone, but I think that's the one I'm going to have to go with. So we'll put the green one in and we'll try to get some of the green out. So that looks okay. So what did I grab first? This is the gathered twigs and we're just kind of going to go around into the dark spots, bring up some color. If I go into this, it's okay. It's not going to bother me any. I still haven't decided on the color, but if it's going to be brown, it's just going to have a little shadow there next to the tree, which is fine because it's going to have a shadow next to the tree anyway. That tree is going over it. Okay, so we're just going to put in the color through here. On any of the branches. And down through the bottom here. Try to get into the of the book here. I'll have to do that with water. Go down here and get this one. Okay, now we got a nice base color on there. And we'll go in with the vintage photo using the same uh, tool. Just dipping it in, kind of mixing my ink. So we're going to put this on the edges in the deep shadows. We'll start down here at the base and then we'll work our way up. Just playing with the color a little bit. Okay, now we'll go in with the walnut. And this is darker still. 
try to put that in where it's the darkest and then underneath here. We will also be using a pencil on here, so anything I miss, I can deepen up with a pencil. This page has just got a little too much detail in it just to do plain inking on for me. Okay, I'm going to play with that a little bit more, we'll add a little more shadow under his wing here. Around his eyes. <laughs> I just play. Okay, so the tree is basically done and I still have to figure out the uh, woodwork here. This is turning out all right. Minus a few little blotches. Um, we have some bottles over here I'm gonna just take the ink down on. Okay, we're gonna take a little water brush here. It just happens to be the Arteza water brush that I have sitting on my desk that I could grab. <laughs> and I'm gonna try to touch up some of this so we we'll just take the brush out. It's got water on it. We're just gonna pull that over to that side because it's distress ink and water based. You can go in and touch it up with water. So anywhere you didn't like it, you can use your water brush to blend it or move it a little bit. It's not going to take it all up, but it will help you out a little bit. So, like this little blue spot, I can kind of blend it, but it's not going to come up. We will pull some of that over there to that edge though. Pull that down. Do the same thing here. We'll pull that down into this area. And down in here, we'll do the same thing. Pull some of that down. Get rid of that kind of funkiness there. And there we go. We'll let that dry and we'll be back. Okay, what I've decided is I'm oh, going to go ahead and do the wood work in kind of brown tones like um, the picture I showed at the beginning of the video. It's uh, the little badger page with the staircase here. So the woodwork and this um, place and what I did was I went ahead and kind of did the whole background here in scattered straw and then went in with the brown <sighs> but I'm going to go in here with um, the gathered twigs let's see if you can see this little corner over here I'm going to start here the uh, background we did with the scattered straw twigs and um, blue. So I'm just going to take 
uh, some of the gathered twigs and just lightly go over it. And I don't have to be uh, terribly anything here because it's in the background already. <laughs> so I can just go over everything and just give a nice uh, light coating of this on the whole book or a whole page and get kind of a brown undertone going. Going over the trees, add a little more color in there also. And then those shadows that I put down are going to blend right into that. So basically that's all I'm going to be doing and it's just running ink all over. Just the light all over ink. Should put a page behind here just in case I go over the edge. Don't want to get the pugs on the other side. They're already done. So basically this is kind of a boring bit, but it kind of has to be done. I'll go ahead and lift the camera up so you can see more of it. I have the book resting on a set of pencils so it will hold it up a little bit for me. Even on the uh, little window here. We can go out on the lines because it's into black. Can make it a little darker under there, but I can also go in with a different color ink or pencils to do that. And down the little window pane here. Okay, and we'll just go over the top up here. And like I said, it doesn't matter. Let's get the paper up. If I get into the blue, it just adds more color up there, which is fine. Getting into the crease of the paper, not so easy. <laughs> tip for that too if you're using the ink tool. I'm just hoping you can see all this. Let's keep moving the book around. And like right about there we have the gray shadow which kind of gives us a nice look there. over his little words. I don't want to go over the story with a really dark color, so we'll probably... I'm going to see what we're going to do. If we're going to make it really dark, I'm going to keep it light like this. I'm kind of liking this color. the um, sheet on this side, so don't go over the edge on that side. Right in here, just kind of touch it in. A little piece here. Okay, now for the center of the book, I'm going to take the little pad off and I'm going to fold it. And I'm going to ink just that bit. I'm going to take it straight down and push it in there. It's going to be a little darker, which is fine. But we're going to smush it right into the area. 
as good as I can get it smushed. Yep, watch it fly all over the place. Using my fingernail, try to get it down there as close as I can. And bring it all the way down the book. And that kind of helps it out a little bit. If we still don't have enough color in there, you can always take a water pen. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to take the ink. This is a plastic uh, sheet. Smush it down on the sheet. We're going to pick some of that up with the water pen. And just go in there. And get it. Boom. Some of that is um, the stitching that's in there, so there's no way of getting the stitching unless you, um, not with this ink, <laughs> I'm going to say that. <laughs> you would have to use a different ink. Okay, we're going to go in now with a little bit of vintage photo, just on the creases. We're going to give it some shadow here. So we're going to take it on there and then just drag it across, making that area dark. And you can also go up and down on the blue. I don't know. How are you seeing that? So poof, we're making dark edges there. So I'm dipping it into the ink on only one side so I know where my line is going to be, and then I bring it out. Okay, same on all of these. We're going to go around and do all of them. If you feel more comfortable using a different uh, tool, go for it. I just started with these, so this is what I'm used to. Bring up a little shadow here if you go over a little bit. here. I want to get that darker. Kind of turning my wrist to go down on this one. And of course, switch the paper over because I don't want to go over the edge. And we're going to darken this corner up. And under here, we want to darken that a bit, too. Okay. And we're just going to go around and get the uh, little areas here. If you want, you can always bring in one of your <laughs> little tools and get it just a little darker there. Always remember that the ink will dry lighter than what you're putting down. That fuzz off of there. <laughs> okay, we'll go up towards the top here. Same thing. Bring it up. Over here, there's a shadow down on this side. Shadow coming down under the tree. Back here. And on that too. Okay. Down on this side. Didn't quite get that to the edge, so I'm going to bring in a little tool. I don't know which one it is. <laughs> and 
cracking it there. Okay, up here at the top. Just gonna try to bring it in here a little bit. And I'm twisting the tool with my wrist. So I'm kind of doing this motion. So it twists on the way up. Because we're going around a curve here. Little one here, tucking that up a little. And the inside here. And the corner up here. And up at the top. Right there. Now we work on the other side. Bring the paper over here. Hey. <laughs> Move everything over. And we're on this side. Just darken it up back here. It's behind everything. A little under here. here just wherever you feel it's dark you can also do this with like I said pencil if you don't want to use the inks I just like using the ink in this book well, who am I kidding I just like using my ink Okay, darker here. But like I said, I don't want to mess up with his words too much. I do want to be able to read the story. Okay, down here. And now I have one more color I can bring in, and that's the Walnut Stain, and really get those corners and stuff dark. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to the uh, tool, little tool, and just go in and do that. So we're going to start the window down here, and right in here we're just going to add the Walnut. Make that nice and deep. And do that on the edges and just underneath it to kind of draw a line between the two. Okay. Do that on all of the ones we just did. And also add it into the blue for extra shadows too. Okay. 
well, that's a great color for all this. I don't know how much up here you can see. I have to move the book down. <laughs> I'm going to darken it up in here. Other side here. Okay, I am going to have to let this dry, and then if I want to, I'll come in with a couple of pencils and shade those a little bit better. I also have uh, Saturn here to do, the moon and the star, they're all going to be done in the same color. So we might as well get that done real quick. She tapped her fingers, it's because she's looking for something, sorry. <laughs> I'm looking for my um, little blocks of ink. They seem to be missing from my table. I have a sip of my tea too. Ah, here they are. So we have in my little one, mustard seed, which sounds like a good one for some planets. Bright pink, not a good choice but we do have um, some spiced marmalade and these two mix together really well. So, I'll go ahead and open those up. The little teeny tiny cubes are a great deal. Uh, you get four of these in a package and they cost about a dollar or two more than one of these big ones. So if you wanted to get a little collection of these inks going, that's a great way to do it. Let's see. I need a yellow one on one and an orange on the other. And I'm just going to take the uh, big tools here and do these up. Okay, so going into the mustard seed here. Nice kind of a bright color. Going to get our planet done. Our star. And our little moon. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. <laughs> now for shadowing, we're going to go into the spiced marmalade. I'm just going to run it right down on this side. And just mix those two together. Kind of a little uh, moon down here. And on the star. These colors work great with canary 
yellow and I can't remember the orange that I used to go with it but they they blend really nice with those too okay cool okay now, like I said I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll come back and we'll do some pencil work see you in a bit Okay, I've pulled out some Prisma colors and we're going to do some shading probably on this little piece here and maybe these two videos getting kind of long. So I'm going to show you how I do a little bit of it and then um, I'll just finish the rest of it off camera. So we're going to take a dark brown and we're going to just kind of highlight the area under here. I guess that's a low light. We're going to bring the um, shading out. And bring it down this line that's here, which is probably a recessed piece. This one section here is on the window, and this section is going into the window frame. So I'm going to bring some of that up on this side. And like I said, this is the uh, dark brown. You could use a sepia here. I'm just trying to match the walnut that is already on there. And bring it out a little bit. Then we're going to go in with light umber on top of it, bring it out a little bit more, just a real light touch on that. Then we're going to bring in light umber. Kind of go over everything again. Bring it up real soft here. Then we're going to bring in some goldenrod. I'm going to bring that on this side. A little up here. Bring in a little bit of yellow ochre. Again, these are our brighter colors. They're going to blend in nicely with our gathered twigs. And then a little bit of jasmine. Just kind of colors it all together. And if you want to just bring some jasmine on this side, going up on this side, just kind of help shade in where the ink kind of got blotchy. Bring in a little more of the dark um, brown over here. Just bring it down a little bit more. 
that is a recessed area. Boom. You can bring the dark up over on this side if you want. Should really have a piece of paper under here. <laughs> but I'm not going to get very far on this. But You can bring some dark in over on this side. Just on the bottom. Just wherever your little heart wants it. Like I said, these colors will fix up any inking mistakes that you had or you didn't want to see either. Of course, you could use just these colors to color in the wood also without having to put any of the ink down. So we're going to take the dark brown and we're just going to run it on the bottom of this. There is a line here. I'm going to kind of bring it over. Kind of looks like a shadow would be underneath that part. And of course, we're going to shadow right under here where the other wood comes connecting to it. And you can also shadow in the corners here if you want. Okay, next color. Just play with your browns any way you want to. making sure you mix them up. I want that piece a little darker, so I'm going to bring up some color here. Anyway, going up this one, we'll do the same thing. We'll start it off dark brown down here. So that we can cover up that little blue bit that's there. Bring it up. Next color is the, I'm going to go with the light umber. Sorry, you can't see that. I'm just going to shadow up here a little bit more. Bring it down. Bring the dark brown up there. Darken that a little bit better. You can do that in the tree too. Darken up underneath the side. Any place you missed, like in between his feet. I threw a little of the yellow, the same colors in the star on his on his feet down here. We want to keep um, this woodwork lighter than the tree itself, so don't don't make it too dark up here. <laughs> you can bring it underneath where the wood is darkest. Give it more shadows. Sorry about that. Just bring in the yellows too to give it a little more yellow in here.
wood has all different shades in it, so I kind of added all different shades in the woodwork. Okay, so we just keep messing with these colored pencils and we will end up with a better shading than I did with the ink. If you can't see that, I'll come up a little higher here. I'm just playing with this one. See how the ink is kind of not so good there. We just come in with the brown and we'll kind of go over it. Bring it out a little bit. And we'll come in with the, the lighter color. Just go over it again. Until we get to the um, lightest colors. And the lightest color is um, jasmine. So even with just that little bit that we've done, we've changed the look of what I inked here, which is cool. We can also do it with the um, little tail feathers if we bring in the uh, dark brown and there's a little bit of ink that was missed here. We can darken those up. Give his feathers just a little bit better look here. These kind of go up a little bit so we can bring in some color and highlight that. Get closer to the tree, closer to the feet. On this side here, in the book you can darken up the pages or the cover. You can add in different colors if you don't like the yellow on this feather here from the star, which is a nice glow. You can just go over it. In his face, go darker around his eyes or his beak. A little more color up in his feathers around his face. Put dark brown up there in his little fluffs. Again, going around his eyes. And just play with it until you like it. And bring in a little black. Accent the book pages a little more. His eyes a bit. You can color those in black. And go around and play with it. You can go under the um, branches here and darken them even more. You can accent any of his feather lines. So this is what I will be doing off camera. Just pulling in some extra lines here to help define certain areas. If you want that really dark, you just can go in with a little of the um, black and then bring in some of the brown to help it out. If you wanted to find these branches a little bit better up here, just add a little black to it. 
black and brown work out really nice together. If you really want to get this dark, again, bring the black in. Kind of go down around your corners and just add some extra lines in there. Very sharp pencil. Turn it a bit to get really dark depth in there. Okay, that goes for this thing too. If you want to bring in your black, you can, since we did this in black, just accent where you want to make it even darker. Fix the areas by changing the pressure on the black pen to match very light gray here. I inked it all with black, so trying to put gray on top of this is not going to be a really good idea. But the black, you can just lift your pressure up and get it. If you want to add a highlight, come in with the white. Prisma has a nice white color that will cover up anything. So just figure out where you want to make it a little darker or where you didn't get the ink before and darken those areas up. So especially like in the wheel here where we couldn't really get in with the ink. You want to be careful with the black here because, well, you know, you got black there. It'll show up, but not so much in your picture. You'll see it. <laughs> so you kind of want to leave a little white line there. We can darken it up here. And just play around with it. Have fun. That's what coloring is about anyway, right? Nice, relaxing, fun. What I enjoy when I ink it, I can just go over with the pencils and add little details, darken areas, add shadows, just make little things pop out. So what I'm going to do is play around with this some more. I'll even do a little in the planet here. This is the uh, goldenrod. We can darken it up in some spots, bring a little more roundness to my planet. <laughs> It's just the pressure you put on the pencil. So right here you want it darker. So I put a lot of pressure there and then just lighten it up coming out. Just blend it into the ink. And if you want it darker still, you could bring in the brown, a light ochre brown, since we're using a golden rod. The light ochre would look nice with that. Well, I've got light umber. Let's put a little of that in there. If you want a little bit more of a shadow, just very lightly. This gives it a little more depth. And that's what I'll do with the star also. We'll just go up and do that real quick. Darken it on one side and bring the color up. And that just changes it. A little bit of the brown. And then you have a whole shaded little star there. Moon is going to be done the same way. Just bring some of that up and darken the little tip. 
if you go over and into the black and it shows up, just take your eraser and zip it out. Anyway, that's what I will be playing with. And since the uh, video is quite long, I will just leave a picture at the end of what it looks like when it's finished. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for liking my videos, subscribing, and uh, watching them. <laughs> I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in another video. Bye now.